All right, this is a big week when we're talking about discipleship, and we're going to move into discipling people that's outside of your home, but this is inside your home. And this is this is a big deal when you're a grandparent or you're a parent. There is a responsibility that we have to have and use the influence we have uh, to point our kids towards Christ. We see discipleship not just in the Bible. We see it all in the world. We see discipleship in sports where like Peyton Manning discipled really Russell Wilson and raised him up. Warren Moon was like that mentor. He he raised up Cam Newton and just taught him everything he knew. Uh, Michael Jordan raised up Kobe Bryant, taught him everything. That was kind of like his disciple. He didn't disciple LeBron because he's LeBron's daddy in every way. <laughs> but let's move into the Word. I want to read to you Deuteronomy chapter 6. This is what the Bible says. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord God with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your strength. I hope that is like your aspiration. That is the condition of your soul. I'm loving God with everything that I am. Verse 6. These commands that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Watch what he says. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands. Bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Impress them upon your kids. What is he saying? You need to raise up another uh, generation after you and put the spiritual baton in their hands. It's a responsibility that we have as parents and as grandparents. Okay, listen, let me just bust a myth here. This, this is not easy for anybody. It's, it's not easy for me. Even though I'm a pastor, some people think, well, it's easier for you. You're a pastor. No, no, it's not easy for anybody. So if you have it like in your mind that our kids are sitting in a circle when I get home and they're like, oh, Father, please disciple us and sing a worship song to us. That doesn't happen. When, when we are wanting to do a Devo and we are really engaging into discipleship, it is like the end times. It's wars and rumors of war and people are belching and wind is being broken and it is like every obstacle in the world every demon is fighting against it and you want to just throw in the towel but I'm going to tell you what discipleship is as a parent or grandparent listen it is you saying I'm always going to be on the edge of this struggle I'm going to be in this game there's two different ways that you disciple okay one is what we would call the Greek form and the other is the Hebrew form the Greek form is we are discipling around a subject. Like, hey, let's talk about this subject and let's teach on it and, and, and let's discuss it and see what the Bible says. A, a, a lot of learning in our universities are Greek style of learning. A lot of our teaching, particularly on the weekends, are Greek style of learning. We're talking about a topic, we're taking a passage of scripture, and we're, we're hitting that topic. You're going to do that. The other form of discipleship is the Hebrew style uh, of learning. Learning, and that is that you're not getting a degree in a subject. You're getting a degree in the person that you've been closest to for many, many years. That's why they are the disciples of Jesus, the disciples of John the Baptist. It's a Hebrew form of learning where people are going, I'm their disciple. I'm learning everything that they've had in them is getting downloaded to me. That is the vision of our home. Here's the fear that I have. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, there's a guy who, he's a priest, his name is Eli. Eli's got a young boy now living in the temple with him named Samuel that is about to be a prophet in Israel that does amazing things. But Eli, even though he's a priest, and even though his sons are being raised in the temple around the Word of God, his sons were not discipled and they didn't live for God. Matter of fact, they, because of their position as the priest's sons, the Bible says they walked in financial abuse and they walked in sexual abuse, and God cursed them, and Eli lost his own life and lost his sons because the Bible says, you honored your kids more than you honored me, and you didn't impress these principles on their heart. That's when I say, like, it's like a holy thing inside of me. Like, I don't want my kids to grow up around church 
but not be in the Word and grow up around great people who love the Lord but not have these things uh, uh, impressed upon their hearts. So you say, how do you do it? When, then he says, he, he says, talk about it when you sit at home. That's what we're talking about, the dinners. When you're sitting around watching a movie, talk about like how it relates to the principles in the Word of God. Talk about it. You're just sitting down. Just make it a normal part of your day. But then, this is a great point for teenagers. When you walk along the road, if you got your Bible, you need to underline this. This is a pro tip for those that have sons and daughters. They're, they're 13, 14, 15, 16. You're going to have to learn the art of the walk and talk. When, when, when they hit that age and you talk to them about things, a lot of times they're going to feel like they're under an interrogation. They're under your thumb. Uh, but when you are doing something else, walking along the road, it is really good when it's dark outside for me. Like, and I'm walking with the kids, all of a sudden, like, it's, their defenses go down, their heart opens up. We can talk about the things that are dear to their heart in a walk and talk, and it just weaves into talking about the things of God when you lie down pray over them when they when they get up bless them in their day okay he says this model it what does that mean when he says tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads he says there needs to be some authority in the home that models the word what does it symbols on your hands mean listen we are actively living according to the word of God we live out the Word. James 1.22 says, Don't just be hearers of the Word, but be doers also. So he says, do it. We bind it. We put them as symbols on our forehead. What does it mean? Like our home, our perspective, and the way that we think, it, it is filtered through not the world, but the Word. We're going to be different than everyone else. And he says, and then he says, put them, watch this, write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Many of you build out, have built a home and you've done that. You wrote out scriptures on the studs and the walls, and maybe you wrote scriptures down in the foundation of your home. I've seen people do that. But there is, there is a imagery here that you said, whether you did that or not, it need your house needs to be marked that goes here we live according to the word of god and if you'll value the word and you'll talk about it sitting down walking along the road and you'll model it you're going you're going to raise up some disciples god bless go have a great day